Hello friends. Surprisingly, there are people who watch this channel. And on occasion, we get a viewer request. This next one, which took me way too long to make, was requested by Mike Mike, who would like to see the defunct history of Buffalo. A region that has a very cold and unforgiving climate this time of year, hence the reason for the fire. Just thinking of Buffalo gives me a chill. My father was born in Boston. I'm from California, and I currently reside in Oklahoma. So I have a weird mashup of teams that I'm a fan of. And it's the Pat side of me that may have some trouble not being a complete prick throughout this whole video. But in the spirit of the holiday season, I'm going to restrain myself and simply regale you with some interesting football history. So let us begin. Buffalo, a special little slice of tundra. A place where crying in a sauna has evolved into a competitive sport. Okay, we're already off to a bad start. Go back to the fire. Let's reset. Buffalo's storied history with American football goes all the way back to the late 1800s with semi-pro leagues and sandlot teams. The predecessor of the first NFL Buffalo team began with the Buffalo All-Stars playing from 1915 to 1917. The team would be led by Eugene F. Dooley and star player Barney Lepper. In 1918, Buffalo's teams were not allowed to play outside the city due to the Great Buffalo's herpes outbreak, I mean flu pandemic of 1918. The All-Stars would be discontinued as a result. However, at this same time, a new team was already being formed by local shoe salesman Warren D. Patterson, called the Buffalo Niagara's. In the Niagara's first season, they would win the city championship and go undefeated with five wins and their defense only allowing one touchdown all season long. Their success was aided by the flu pandemic and World War I, as Buffalo was able to sign talent from suspended, struggling, and folding clubs. In 1919, alongside the reopening of the New York Professional Football League, the Niagara's would rename, becoming the Buffalo Prospects. As the prospects, the team would win the league championship in two games, a part of a Thanksgiving weekend tournament versus the Rochester Jeffersons. The club was renamed and sold in 1920, becoming the Buffalo All-Americans, yeah, and purchased by Frank McNeil. McNeil was able to get the All-Americans into the APFA, the team would continue as the All-Americans until 1923, posting winning records each year. In 1924, McNeil would sell the team back to Patterson and former player and co-owner Ernst Tommy Hewitt, who would rename the team the Buffalo Bison. One day the guy on the Buffalo was cruising around through the plains, seeing a bear. In 1924, the Bison barely managed a winning season with six wins and five defeats. This would be followed by a 1-6-2 record in 1925. In 1926, the team's player coach Jim Kendrick would rebrand the team Buffalo Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> has the heart of a lion. As the club was filled with talent from the Southwest, primarily Texas, the Rangers would go on to be meh, as they would finish with a 4-4-2 four, four, record. In 1927, the Buffalo team would change its name back to Bison You've got to come back with me. and saw a winless 0-5 season in 1927, suspended operations in 1928, and a 1-7-1 record in 1929. After this, the Bison would fold. Buffalo would eventually get another team in 1940, known as the Buffalo Indians, who changed their name to Tigers in 1941. Buffalo is well known for their Tigers. This club would compete in the third American Football League and fold alongside the league in 1941. And of course, the team was terrible both seasons. The next Buffalo team would emerge in 1946, playing in the All-American Football Conference and known as the Bisons in their first season and then Bills until they folded in 1949. They sucked too. The hell we call Buffalo would not receive another pro team until 1959 with the founding of the Buffalo Bills, who would join the NFL in 1970. There are, however, many other interesting notables that dot the pre-Bills timeline, such as the All-Americans sharing agreement with the Union Club of Phoenixville from 1920 to 1921, the All-Americans making the first trade in NFL history when the Akron Pros traded Bob Nash to Buffalo for $300, 5% of the ticket sales of the game that they were at that moment still playing, 
and a handful of magic beans. There is also a dispute between Akron, Buffalo, and the Decatur Staleys for the 1920 APFA Championship, which was awarded to Akron partially because of the whole undefeated thing. This was followed by the Staley Swindle in 1921, when the All-Americans and Chicago Staleys once again disagreed over the championship, which was decided by a vote of the association's executive committee, awarding the championship to the Burrs. And at one point, the team even played itself when in 1922, former owner Warren D. Patterson, who had held on to the prospect name, formed a team and played a match against the All-Americans, who won nobody. And to this date, not one former Buffalo player is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Perfect. Well, I think I dropped the ball on the whole spirit of the holidays and restrained myself and not be a prick thing. So if there's any Bills fans watching, I leave you with this, because we can both laugh at this. Look at that. He just goes right for it, like, that was the play. Never has a single play encapsulated a franchise so perfectly. At least he found the hole. <laughs>